what are the goals of therapy for somebody with thalassemia? Well, this depends on what <laughs> country you're in. <laughs> let, yeah. let, well, we're yeah. sitting here no. in the United I mean, States. At, at the end of the day, you should say, we want to cure definitely right. the disease. Okay. No, that's, but it's not yet completely the case. There are some options, and maybe we can discuss it. Well, we'll get there, but sure. of course, uh, if you, we did a, a huge progress, uh, progresses on treating that. Now, what I want to do before my retirement to cure them definitely. But right now, there's no cure right now as we sit here at this table. Yeah, yes, there is. There, there is. Are, there are, yeah, yeah. As of now, you've got something that can cure the disease. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness. What are the current approaches then to treat uh, to approach ineffective erythropoiesis? Here? Well, we go back to the pathophysiology. So ineffective erythropoiesis is the driver of the right. uh, phenotype expression of the disease. And ineffective erythropoiesis could be of different uh, grade uh, or uh, severity. What, what can we do? We can, uh, in some way, try to correct uh, the unbalance between alpha and beta, because uh, this is responsible of ineffective erythropoiesis. Bone marrow transplantation, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but uh, but the still, uh, I mean, we have something to learn about ineffective erythropoiesis. Uh, so we need uh, to properly understand uh, how it. Uh, Let me bring up two directions of therapy, which, when I talk about beta thalassemia, my colleagues always bring up, and they're not they're not pediatricians, they're not hematologists. EPO, human recombinant EPO, and I'm looking at you, and you're scowling. Why? Well, because it doesn't work. Uh, well, and, that's a pretty good yeah, reason. So, and so that's not something that we would recommend for thalassemia, but I want to just step back just a second because I think this is a very, the ineffective erythropoiesis is a very important concept because this is something that really isn't understood by most people who manage thalassemia. I mean, when we transfuse patients with thalassemia, what we're trying to do is to suppress their bone marrow. If I bring your hemoglobin level up to 10 or 11, which is where we like them to be, that shuts off the bone marrow. And many of the complications of thalassemia major are because of this activity of the bone marrow. Bony changes and a lot of problems be, are caused because the bone marrow is so active. So suppressing this is, the mo one, is probably the most important yeah, thing yeah. In, in, the, in the current management. It's not we are correcting the anemia to suppress the marrow. And that means keeping their hemoglobin level at seven or eight will not do that. Yeah. And this is a major issue in people that treat it because they don't understand this. And so we have all these rules in the United States about don't transfuse patients if their hemoglobin is over eight. And for thalassemia patients, this is really detrimental because right. we see patients that come to us that have been under transfused yeah with bone fractures and osteoporosis and severe complications. So we keep their hemoglobins high to suppress ineffective erythropoiesis. It's a wonderful side effect of this treatment that they feel better when their hemoglobin so is high. So if I understand you correctly, not only does, does uh, recombinant EPO not work, but it's detrimental. No. Did yeah. I no, 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 that? no, no. I'm talking about we, the, the topic just before that Nika talked about was ineffective erythropoiesis. Right. Okay. The treatment for thalassemia now, I'm not, and I'm excluding gene therapy and bone marrow transplantation okay, we'll and other things. We'll get to that later. The standard treatment is transfusion. The reason we transfuse is to suppress ineffective erythropoiesis because many, many of the side effects now are due to the ineffective erythropoiesis. Okay, what about... EPO has no role on this. When we, when we transfuse, we are shutting off their internal but that was EPO my point. response. I bet you're going there. Right. Go and, ahead. And, and so yeah. it actually could be detrimental. That was yes. my question. Because yeah. you, you yeah. will expect, so you're driving an ineffective process right. by yeah. giving somebody yeah. EPO. They have an effective erythropoiesis, and now you're driving it further. Yeah. So that worsens the bone disease, it worsens the, yeah. the extramedullary hematopoiesis. I did get it right. Yes, and it, pre and it predisposes you to things like thrombosis, which EPO yeah. does anyway. All right, and good. you have the risk with thalassemia and already. And that is a so, mistake uh, which was uh, made. Uh, now it's clear not to use EPO. But that was done in the past and was really very risky because 
Epoys acting in an early stage of uh, erythropoiesis where the ineffective erythropoiesis come up. So if you are giving an hormone like EPO, which potentiate uh, erythropoiesis, uh, it potentiates you're the ineffective. You're driving the disease, aren't yeah. you? You're driving yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So let's go to one other really old therapy, so old that I know about it, hydroxyurea. That's been out there for quite a while. Um, is there a role for it uh, in this disease, and what is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's another skull. No, no, well there, no, there are some patients who have some response. I wouldn't say that it's a primary thing that we use. There are some patients, especially thalassemia intermedia, thalassemia intermedia meaning patients who have a combination of mutations such that they, their hemoglobin levels are in the 6.5 to 10 range. Those patients, some of them, it may be worth trying. You may, their hemoglobin may come up a gram or a gram and a half. But in general, I don't think of it as a primary thing. No, uh, in yeah. my personal experience, actually, uh, hydrosurea is not a treatment for yeah. thalassemia. It's a good uh, treatment for sickle cell yeah. disease yeah. because another okay. story of increasing the fetal hemoglobin. Although there are uh, uh, some reports, uh, limited to specific uh, population. For example, the Iranian population with thalassemia was treated with hydroxyurea, and they apparently respond quite well. But there are downsides here, right? Hydroxyurea is not without its side effects. Well, yes, that's true, but uh, uh, the dosage we are going to use in case in thalassemia um, doesn't worry us too much for side effects. But the the problem is giving something with, uh, with, which is efficacious. I, as, as Tom said, I use hydrosurea occasionally in those patients uh, with thalassemia, with non-transfusion dependent thalassemia, who actually have extramedullary hematopoiesis, wow. which may be responsible of severe clinical manifestation. Sometimes they come in, they cannot walk anymore because they have the pressure along the spine. And uh, the hydroxyurea works in such yeah. a situation. Why? Because probably suppressing these extramedullary hematopoietic masses. Mm -hmm. Hydroxyurea, by the way, does have effects on reproductive health, isn't that right? Um, not really at this dosage. There, the experience based on the use of hydroxyurea in uh, other hematological conditions such as polycythemia and so on, they de really don't uh, uh, show specific effect uh, on fertility. Or, but of course, if, we, if I have a patient on hydroxyurea and she wants to become uh, pregnant, I stop hydroxyurea in any case.